this is about identifying our blocks. And in order to do that, I want to quickly review what we have looked at already. Because I think once we understand the relationship between God and the Son of God, you'll see that we're actually acting that out here in many different ways, but fundamentally in the same way. So I'm just going to go qu quickly through the metaphysics, because repetition of this stuff is very important anyway. So, God and oneness. God is, and then we see, cease to speak. And then the Son of God, you'll see that the circles are slightly different, but I've simplified it just so that we have two here, just so we can see this relationship between the Father and the Son. The tiny mad idea of separation, and then the Son of God is dreaming. Dreaming of separation. Very simple. So the relationship now becomes one of the Son wants to go off and be on its own. The tiny mad idea of what would it be like to go and play on my own, away from Father. And God is totally unaware of this. God just continues in love eternally. But the Son of God wants to keep the separation because it likes, likes it, it has chosen it. So, what now starts to happen in the dreaming son's mind is, God doesn't want me to have this separation, but I do. So now we have separate interests. God only believes in oneness and love, and the Son of God believes in separateness and wants to experience itself as self-created. It's called autonomy, being self-created. And by this one decision of separation, we now have separate interests. So it's me or you. It's either the Father's will, God's will, or it's mine. So it's me or you. This is a very fundamental um, part of the ego script, this me or you principle. We see it everywhere. We see Can it. I, ask you something? Yes. I, I don't think I understand it. The Son of God, is that us? Thank Can you. Yeah. We are all yeah. part of this Son of God, yeah. dreaming of separation. Yeah. Right. Like a hologram. Yeah. The whole is within each one of us, and we're all part of the whole. Yeah. That's what a hologram is, right? But it's just a dream. Yeah. Right. But we think it's real. So within the dream, we have this, it's me or you. Either it's God's will or it's my will. We see this in animals. Uh, one animal killing another to get their needs met, it's me or you. We see it in plants. Each plant trying to take the nu nutrition out of the soil at the expense of the other. So it's me or you wherever we are, even though you might not, you know, even though the world is beautiful in some ways, we might, like, might not like to hear this, but this is actually what's going on here. So it's me or you and separate interests. My interests are now, or the Son of God's interests, are now different from the Father's. And we see this, of course, and every, everyone has a separate interest. I want my needs met at your expense. Mm -hmm. And the third main, main principle is the, the scarcity principle. God, of course, is the source of love, the supplier of love eternally. And now we have separated from our source, of course we have this sense of lack. I have blocked, we as the one son have blocked our source because we want our autonomy, we want our sense of separate individuality, dividing away from God, in dividing, individuality means dividing from, from source. So as soon as we've separated, we have this sense of lack. And the more blocked we are, the more we have this sense of lack. So it's part of the human condition, part of the condition of being in the dream. 
So those are the three main principles that are running in everything that we do and in every pattern that we have. If you look underneath every pattern, you'll see one of these three principles acting out, or maybe all three of them, actually. And it's good that we know that, because everyone has the ego script in their minds, and everyone is acting these principles out in our own very specific ways. So the sun, the dreaming sun, had to come up with a plan so as not to undo this choice, because it likes it here, it's the choice. It wants to stay separate, even though it's insane. Even though it doesn't make us happy or peaceful, we choose it and we fight for it. So it came up with the ego thought system, this very clever, sophisticated thought system. And remember that the son has the same creative abilities as the father. The only difference is this is the father and this is the son. Otherwise, the son is identical to the father in its creative abilities. So guess what? We come up with an incredibly sophisticated thought system. <clears throat> and the plan was to create a thought system to keep us totally distracted from ever getting back to choosing again. That's its plan. That is its only plan. So I'm going to read from the dynamics of the ego in chapter 2. The ego's goal quite explicitly sorry the ego's goal is quite explicitly ego autonomy in other words self creation rather than god creation from the beginning then its purpose is to be separate sufficient unto itself and independent of any power except its own that is why it's a symbol of separation so the ego's is a symbol of separation and its only purpose is to stay separate. That's what it was designed for. That's what we, as the dreaming son of God, designed the ego to do, to keep us separate, in, even though it's insane. So, And it's good that we know that, so that once we start looking at our patterns, we, realize that these, we start to realize that these patterns have a purpose and they are to keep us separate, nothing else. And as we uh, discovered before, the principal trio, the um, unholy trinity of the ego system is sin, guilt and fear. Everything else is built on that. And the sin is, I, I deem this a sin that I've separated from God. I'm <coughs> guilty, therefore, for doing that. And I fear that God will rise up and punish me for this sin that I've committed. This is a, a made-up construct, this sin, guilt, and fear. It's not real. It's the ego's or the, <coughs> the dreaming son's creation to keep us looping and distracted from ever getting back to this mad idea. And having created the sin, guilt, and fear, it wasn't sufficient enough and it's too unbearable, so the mind came up with projecting a world of bodies to hide in. Another layer of forgetfulness, another layer of block, so that we never get here. So we, the one son projects this, this world of bodies to hide in and creates a whole dynamic between everyone based on silicon, sin, guilt and fear to keep us looping and distracted and forgetting that, that any of this has ever happened. And then the final step of the projection is even though we're in a body, even though we've created this sin, guilt and fear um, script the guilt is still there somehow. So how can I get rid of the guilt? I project it out. So this is the final step, which is perhaps the most important to notice here, is how we were trying to get rid of the guilt 
but keep my individuality. Get rid of the guilt and sin, keep my sense of self. This is really what's happening all the time in relationships. So that the last dynamic then is project the guilt so you become the bad guy and I become the innocent victim of you bad guys. Mm. And everyone is acting this out, even the nice people, even the happier people are still doing this dynamic quite a lot of the time, to differing degrees of course. But this is the major dynamic and as I said before, if you read a newspaper or watch movies, this is happening all the time. We're always looking for the bad guy. This is why we love Trumps, mm -hmm. even though even though on one <laughs> level we say, no, 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 I hate him, I hate him. Actually, we love him because now we found the bad guy <laughs> and whew, it's not me. <laughs> we love Trumps, we love Hitler. <clears throat> so a couple of quotes on that also from the dynamics of the ego. Three and four. The ego always attacks on behalf of separation. So this is the projection. Believing it has the power to do this, it does nothing else. So the ego is always attacking in some way because its goal of aut autonomy is nothing else. The ego is totally confused about reality, but it does not lose sight of its goal. It is much more vigilant. Anyone not know what vigilant <coughs> is? Watchful. Watchful. It's much more watchful than you are. Mm -hmm. And the you in The Course of Miracles is always the decision maker, not your body. So you as a decision maker is not as watchful. You know, we're not so... Um, watchful at looking at <coughs> standing above our battlefield as the ego is. Mm -hmm. So the ego is actually smarter than we are because it is perfectly certain of its purpose. It only has one purpose, separation. That's all. You are confused because you do not recognize your purpose. So here we're, all of us are confused. And then the ego can and does allow you to regard yourself as supercilious, unbelieving, light-hearted, distant, emotionally shallow, callous, uninvolved and even desperate, but not really afraid. So the ego allows you to have all these, what we judge in the world as negative emotions. It doesn't mind but doesn't allow you to be really afraid. Minimizing fear, but not its undoing, is the ego's constant effort. So the ego is always trying to lessen fear, and this is why we project. Like if you say something and I can feel fear coming up, I'll attack back very fast mm -hmm. to get rid of it. Get rid of the guilt that's in the fear and put it over on you. So minimizing fear, but not its undoing. So the ego actually wants me to keep some fear. Mm. If I get too peaceful, then I'll, um, you know, I'm already choosing again. So it wants me to stay a bit fearful. So I stay looping in this ego script. Minimizing fear, but not its undoing, is the ego's constant effort and in, is indeed a skill at which it is very ingenious. So it's very, very clever at minimizing fear, but not getting fully rid of it. How can it preach separation without upholding it through fear? And would you listen to it if you recognize that this is what it's doing? See, as Kenneth Wapnick said once, he said, no one has a clue here what's going on. None of the psychologies, none of the spiritualities have really had a clue what's really going on here. This is what's going on here. And when you see it, it's like, oh my God, 
why didn't I see that before? It's so obvious that that's what we're doing all the time. We're trying to minimize fear and put it out there. One of the um, ways I like to is to connect this with birth. A lot of people think that we that we come in clean. And everything that happens to us then forms our sin, guilt and fear. It's not it's apparently it's not so. We come in with the full ego, sin, guilt and fear already in place. Of course we do. That's why we're here, according to the Course in Miracles. That this is a projection of the sin, guilt and fear in the in form. I mean, how quickly after birth does a baby get angry if it doesn't get its needs met? Screams and shouts, you know, very fast. So we know that babies come in with this script already. <coughs> and I believe that depending on how we are received, where we are making up our mind based on the sin, guilt and fear, we form our patterns very early at birth, and less and less so as time goes on. By the time you're six years old, you've pretty well made up your mind how, who you think you are. But particularly at birth, because it's such a huge impact. Because in, in the middle, in your mother's stomach, all your needs are met. And you're thrust into, the, into this ego world of me or you, separate interests and scarcity. And as soon as you're out of the body and the cord's cut, you really start to experience this scarcity. You need, your needs are now operating full on, suddenly and abruptly. And if these new needs are met with uh, no one there for me, um, put in a box, separate, whatever, we, we form a lot of patterns based on that initial experience. Now, what I've been uh, alluding to is we seem to have many patterns and you have your unique set and you have your unique set and you have your unique set all based on sin, guilt and fear but there's only really one pattern going on it's the choice for separation so when I get angry that's because I'm choosing separation when I get jealous it's because I'm choosing separation when I get fearful, that's because I'm choosing separation. And I think that we actually choose separation first. <coughs> and then we choose a pattern. But it happens so fast, we can't even see it. And maybe we never will. It maybe it happens at the same time. But the choice for separation is underneath everything. I want to stay separate, I want to stay individual, I want to stay unique, I want to stay separate and special. That's what's behind everything. And then I act out my set of patterns according to that very strong rule in the mind. I want to stay separate.